Good morning. What is the most powerful force for innovation? The answer is more simple than you may think. It is our brains. It is through our incredible minds and our collective intellect that we can come up with new ideas, create innovative solutions, and ultimately better the world and humanity. Throughout human history, we've achieved incredible successes. We've landed on the moon, we've created life-saving vaccines, and we've connected the world through the internet. All thanks to these beautiful brains of ours. But why is it that some people really stand out as being innovators, while most of us, no matter how smart we are, have difficulty to bring new, real, and relevant ideas to the table? How can we better harness our brains to innovate and to create meaningful change in this world? Today, I want to take you on a journey where we will explore how we can educate ourselves to create more ideas worth spreading in line with Ted's mission. And I want to introduce you to the key element that has been behind and still is behind some of the most remarkable scientific breakthroughs that we've had. It's the power of serendipity. The term serendipity originates from the ancient kingdom of Serendipo. It's the country we now know as Sri Lanka. And legend has it that the king of Serendipo sent his three sons on a journey throughout the kingdom. The brothers were educated really well, and they had to prove to the king that they could use their knowledge in the real world. On their journey, the three princes stumbled upon little, tiny facts. Things that led them to believe that some strange animal behavior was going on. On the side of the road, grass had been eaten. But not on the side of the road where the grass was greenest, but on the side of the road where the grass was less green. Weird lumps of small grass were spilled all over the road. And tracks of three feet were on the road, but then with a strange line next to them. On one side, there were a lot of ants, and on the other, there was a remarkable number of bees. On their own, these small facts didn't really make sense. But the three princes were able to connect the dots and conclude that the animal must have been a camel. And not just a camel, but a lame camel, hence the three feet and the strange line. A camel blind in one eye, because it ate the grass on the less green side, and it couldn't have seen these grass on the other side. A camel missing a tooth, because the lumps of grass were the exact same size of a camel's tooth, and it must have been spilling the grass while eating. And a camel carrying butter on one side, remember the ants, and honey on the other, the bees. When later the princess met a merchant that told him that he had lost his camel, the princess could exactly describe what his camel had looked like. By connecting the dots, they were able to answer a question to a question that they didn't even know they had when they were walking on the road. By the way, can you guess what the merchant replied when you heard the story? It's not what you think. He accused the brothers of stealing his camel. Because how could they so detailedly describe what the camel had looked like without even setting eyes on the camel itself? Don't worry. The brothers didn't have to go to jail. The camel was found and the three princes became an advisor to the king. Thankfully, being knowledgeable and curious works out most of the time. The term serendipity is often described as the fortunate discovery 
by accident. And it is a powerful force for innovation. It lets us stumble upon solutions that we didn't think we knew we had at the beginning. But by embracing uncertainty, we can sometimes make connections that can help us innovate and come up with some of the best solutions that are out there. And we need that. Today, innovation is as vital as ever. We face some massive societal challenges that we need all of our collective brain power to come up with effective solutions. And thankfully, a lot of these solutions are already out there. Recent research has shown that 99% of the things that we need to become sustainable as a human species have already been invented. Our task now is to connect the dots and to apply the knowledge to the problems that we are facing. I am the founder of an artificial intelligence innovation studio. We make some of the most beautiful brands in the world leverage the innovative power of AI. And to do so, we work with some of the best universities in the world. And today, I want to share with you the equation that we use to innovate. And it's, a, it's an equation that we want to share because we think it will make you be more serendipitous in life, and by doing so, becoming better innovators. And although not exhaustive, the equation is one of the best ways to create meaningful, lasting, and impactful change, the things that we so desperately need to create better companies, happier lives, and a better world. I have found that the equation for innovation is simple, yet powerful. Innovation is an invention with a business case. Or for the mathematicians in here, and to make it mathematically more sound, it is the business case that turns an invention into an innovation. Let's break it down piece by piece. We'll start with the business case. The business case is the problem that you're trying to solve or the opportunity that you see. I've seen countless of brilliant minds work on some of the most beautiful solutions in the world that didn't really solve a real problem. From 3D printing to smart dust, all beautiful technologies that in today's world don't solve a big enough problem. You see, all these technologies, I think, can have a huge potential, but they don't solve enough big, big, a big enough problem today. And therefore, um, in today's world, an innovation needs to solve a business case. It needs to solve something that is either viable, real, and realistic to solve in this world. Second, inventions. Inventions are newly feasible creations. Things that were once impossible but are now achievable. From quantum computing to generative AI and brain-computer interfaces. Some of the most brilliant minds in the world are every day working to find new inventions, to push the status quo, to search for things that are feasible today, and to see whether something can be done. And then lastly, innovation. According to the dictionary, innovation it's the introduction of a product that adds value to people's lives. It's an invention that people really want to use. Let's explore an interesting example. This is Professor Jeff Hahn. He's a professor at New York University, and here he performs one of the first ever TED Talks ever given. This is back in 2006. And here he demonstrates something we know today. It's a touchscreen that works on the heat of your fingertips instead of pressure sensitivity. And what's beautiful, he gets a lot of oohs and ahs from the crowd. And at this very moment, when he does a pinch to zoom, he gets a standing ovation. You can see it by the smile on his face. Being a professor, it seems as if he's not really used to being in the spotlight. The breakthrough technology that Jeff Hahn had made here was awesome. It really was an invention. But, like many technologies and touchscreens at the time, it didn't really solve a problem. 
or at least not a problem that people thought added value to their lives. But then, fast forward 16 months, the moment where Steve Jobs introduced the iPhone. It's a moment that I remember vividly. And it's the moment that intuitive touchscreens did become an innovation. You see, Jeff Hahn was a real innovator, or no, Jeff Hahn was a real inventor, but Steve Jobs was a real innovator. He took the recent developments of touchscreen technology and he applied them to an opportunity that he saw to make smartphones. So how can you, how can you be more perceptive to connecting the dots? How can you find inventions for the opportunities that you see? And how can you innovate when 99% of the things that we already, ha already have to become sustainable as a human species have already been invented? The answer lies in increasing your chances of serendipity or to st stay with Steve Jobs to increase your chances of connecting the dots. It's that feeling of, hmm, that's interesting, when something new arises in your existing knowledge, allowing you to make connections that you hadn't seen before. It's the ability to not only see eaten grass by the side of the road, or seeing some footprints in a strange line, but it's the ability to see a lame camel in your mind. The history of innovation is filled with serendipity. Picture the humble post-it note. I think you all know it. It's a product born out of serendipity. Back in 1968, scientist Spencer Silver was working on a glue that he wanted to use for the aerospace, en uh, aerospace industry. It needed to be super strong. Instead, he developed a mild adhesive that you could easily remove and didn't leave any trace. It seemed like a failed experiment at the time, but it was a colleague of Silver that saw the potential. One day, the colleague was struggling with slipping bookmarks in his songbook. And then a light bulb moment hit him. He knew that the mild adhesive was the perfect solution to the slipping bookmarks that he had. And so the post-it note note was born. A combination between a seemingly unrelevant connection of a problem and an invention. So how can you connect the dots? To create more ideas worth spreading. I hope these three tips will help. First, Go on a knowledge safari. Create more dots. Broaden your horizon. Talk to friends, to colleagues, share books, articles, and podcasts. And try to make sure that you constantly keep on adding up unto your knowledge. Today, later at this TED conference, talk to both experts and enthusiasts, especially from people outside of your field. Because by mixing and matching, there is the possibility that there may be a connection that you've seen, that you hadn't seen before. Second, adopt the yes and mindset. Don't resist and don't ever let no or yes but be the first answer. By adding upon the ideas of others, making sure that they can add upon yours, you will make sure that your ideas expand and become better over time. And thirdly, start to make. By experimenting and prototyping, you can make your ideas come to life and therefore put it in a room and let others spark their ideas on the things that you have made. That way, others can give feedback on your ideas and that possibly could make you more connections as well. So, go on a knowledge safari. Embrace the yes and mindset and start to make. If you take these steps, you'll be way on your, well on your way to become more serendipitous in life. 
Remember the story of the three princes and let their tale remind you to always be on the lookout of the things that are already there. And then it is up to you to make connections, to connect the dots. As we're trying to solve some of the most pressing problems in the world, let serendipity be our guide because together we can make more ideas worth spreading. Thank you.